Welcome back to the John Roberts Gaming Channel. This is John Roberts, and you are watching part two of our exciting game with Mannix. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave your comments about this game. And when you're through doing that, head over to Mannix's channel and do the same for him. So Mannix vs. John Roberts, episode two. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, Soviet Union, round three. Get as much land as we can. Seven infantry and one tank. I like it. Okay, so... Do I want to use these for trying to get one of these two territories? Nah, nah, we'll bring these. We'll bring these over. We'll bring these over. I don't think I have any combat. Okay, so I calculated uh, West Russia, my defense of it, and it looks like I can afford to send one infantry and the two fighters to see if I could take Ukraine, and I should have a 92 or 93% chance of holding this that I consider that to be very good. I just have to put everything, five, six, seven, eight, nine, these nine units in here. So, may the dice gods be with us. Okay, so we're successful in Ukraine. I know we're not going to block Belarus. He could just tank blitz it, but it doesn't matter. If he wants Belarus, he's going to take Belarus, so let's let him have it. West Russia is much more important. Put one infantry there to block the other two in Vologda. So he has 12, 21, 26, 27 possible attackers on West Russia. Nine of them are tanks, so I would want about 32 defenders. Maybe 33 or 34, he's got another 5 fighters. At least 32 defenders I would want. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 32. That sounds good. Mobilize our units. Put the tank out in Russia. 4 infantry in Caucasus, the other 3 in Russia. Let's see what Germany has in store for us. UK, round three. So let's take a look around. What did Germany do? 13 infantry? Alright, he took Belarus. Took Ukraine. No units lost. Northwest Europe lost one infantry. France lost two infantry. And Libya, he lost an infantry there. So non-combats. Germany, Karelia, Baltic States, Italy, and two infantry to Poland. It mobilizes units, three infantry in Italy, eight to Germany, and two to Karelia. Alright, United Kingdom. What are we gonna buy? Let's take a look. He's got one, two, three. Four, five, six. That can reach C zone eight. Now I'm going to purchase a fighter to uh, beef up this uh, defense here in C zone eight. Then maybe we'll get two fighters, and then we can get six land units. All right, that looks good. Take this artillery and one of these infantry into France. And tank and infantry into Northwest Europe. And we'll send the fighter to France and we'll use the cruiser to support in Northwest Europe. I think that's all my attacks. I don't really see anything else I could do. I do have these four fighters. Kind of wasted firepower. Alright, so may the dice gods be with us.
All right, so that look uh, worked out. And now we've eliminated a landing point, so he can't bring this fighter. Reduces the numbers that could hit C-Zone 8. We'll put the fighter back in C-Zone 8. Let's transport in these two infantry. I'm gonna go up to Canada. Send the cruiser with them. And that'll be our third transport. Send up this infantry to block. Move this artillery into India to help defend that. Um, I counted this up, and India should still hold. For how long, I don't know. The submarine. We'll move this over to 52. Bring it closer without it being in range of any destroyers. Okay, we're not moving any of these units. We're not using moving those units. These units aren't going anywhere. So, double, triple check. Looks good. Let's mobilize our units. Alright, I'm gonna put a fighter in India. I don't normally put fighters in India, but this is a special case. I need the defense there. And I could also use the extra land unit. It's usually more efficient to put fighters out of UK and then fly them elsewhere. But I can't really get a fighter out of West Russia right now. It's more important to hold West Russia than India. So we'll put one fighter out of UK and one out of India. We'll put the artillery in UK. Two of the infantry will go into India, the rest into UK. Fighter on the aircraft carrier. Okay. Let's see what Japan has in store for us. Okay, USA round three. We'll go over Japan. Seven infantry, one artillery. He bought an industrial complex. Oh, he bombed my Moscow factory. Four IPCs. Took a Venki. Novosibirsk. Kazak, all undefended, and he's devoting some of his fleet to this kind of annoyance. So we just have to keep an eye on these fleets. I guess he's got this little contingent down here. He could take Madagascar and then start helping out in Africa. So I don't know if the UK can really do much to stop them. We'll explore. We'll explore different ideas. So Sinkiang, Sheshwan. Yunnan, an infantry to Yakut, his fleet down to 46, we mentioned this little contingent in 38, okay, industrial complex in Manchuria, 7 infantry, 1 artillery in Japan, okay, USA, I want another destroyer and another transport. How many transports do we have? One, two, five, seven, one more is eight. Eight land units, save one IPC. So I'm gonna sacrifice this one transport. Which actually, this is my first little mistake I just bought. For eight transports, I'll likely only have seven. I'm gonna take Norway, sacrifice the one transport for that purpose. Take Algeria. I think we're gonna try and push the uh, Japanese back, see if we can slow them down. He's bombing us, let's give it back. Okay, may the dice gods be with us. Okay, so that worked out well. Happy with that, happy with that. 
land these two fighters in West Russia. Keep doing everything we can to hold that. Bring this transport back to Canada, and we'll bring we'll bring up units for transport next uh, next round. Take these five infantry. Send these two transports back. All right, start to stack up 13. We need to at some point get this force split so that we can hold 13 and probably 15, but maybe 14 or whatever we need uh, to defend multiple sea zones so that we could have transports in multiple spots. I did think about putting into a uh, sea zone 15. I could get one, two, three, four, five in there. He's got five possible attackers, three, four, five. So it was a little risky and I would be able to get Southern Europe, but that's why I sacrificed this transport to take this instead so that we are taking something, we are putting some pressure while we set up for the med, which is probably what Mannix wanted. We probably wanted us going med rather than uh, Finland. I'm gonna move this submarine down to 58. It's just a better spot, it covers 61 also he has a battleship there so it probably wouldn't be advisable to attack but they can't attack me here so okay we double and we triple check looks good mobilize all out of eastern usa all right, let's send it over to Soviet Union. Okay, Soviet Union, round four. Let's see. Four and eight. So we can do eight. Let's see. That looks like this. That's fine. That should be fine. All right, so we can get Novosibirsk, and there might be no reason at all to move this infantry. And how about Ukraine? For Ukraine, we use one of these. So that's two little trades. Looks good. Because once again, I don't want to use too many units. We need to hold this position. So I will have 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 defenders. He will have a stack of tanks, but my stack of fighters counters that. So we can count them just as normal, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 29, 30, 31. So I think 39 against 31 is pretty good. And I think it's important to make some small trades with the Japanese whenever possible, just to slow him down a bit. We can't just let him just start stacking up. I'm sure he's going to in the future, but we'll see what we could do to counter that. Okay, may the dice gods be with us. to West Russia. We have some US troops watching our back door, so we don't have to worry about that too much right now. So we can just concentrate on West Russia. Of course, we need to leave this one infantry here to block his tanks, as we will only have four units in our capital, but we have a buffer on every border, so it's looking good. 
Okay, artillery and three infantry and then four infantry in Russia. Let's see what Germany has in store for us. Okay, round four, so we'll have to take a look at Germany. Purchases 11 infantry, one artillery. He had to repair three damage. Three damage still remains. Okay, Egypt. So he has the ability to either blitz into Africa or blitz this way. Uh, he took Ukraine. He did lose two infantry there. Northwest Europe, no losses. Took France with no losses. What did I have there? One infantry and one artillery, so not much. Karelia. One infantry to Belarus. Poland. Germany. And he mobilizes units. One infantry, one artillery to Karelia. Seven infantry to Germany and three infantry to Italy. So he has 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 units that can make it to West Russia. In West Russia, we have 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 29, 30, 31, 35, 38, 39. So one more than he can come in right now without reinforcing it with the Soviets. He does have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 heavy hitters. We have 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9 fighters, so that kind of counteracts that. So really, I would just want like 40 in here to defend this properly. Which means I'll probably trade these two. Point is, the UK fighters can stay here. I think they're safe there. Down here in India, I counted it up. So 8, 9. Count the battleships as 10. We'll give it 11 with the cruiser. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, this bomber. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So do we want to trade Burma? Well, without Burma, holding Burma, you can bring another three. So that would be 18, 19, 20, 21. So we can try to defend 21 with 20, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 heavy hitters. We would have one fighter, two tanks. Hmm. Hmm. And then if we do go for Burma, I think we'd have to use two units. So that would be 15, 16, 17, 18. That would bring him down to 18, wouldn't it? So now I have a third transport coming here with two infantry, so I don't need to purchase any more transports. I think three transports is good for the UK. So let's just do units. So I will need six for the Atlantic, and then three for India. I'm going to purchase another fighter. Do it like that. Eight infantry, one artillery, one fighter. I like it. So for combat, we obviously want to take France. Use those two. Take that one aircraft carrier. Oh, sorry, aircraft carrier. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Not really. Artillery and another infantry. We're going to use one of these transports. And then we'll take this tank. One fighter. Only one fighter. Reason being, I'm producing another fighter out of here. I have four fighters here. This is well defended, especially being reinforced with the Soviet Union. So I can send another fighter down to India and bring my defenses up to 19 with two fighters. Much stronger defense. One I'm much more comfortable with. But in order to do that, I need this fighter to reach West Russia. One, two, three, four. If I were to go to France, I would not be able to do that. So we have two cruisers. There's not much else for them to do except give their support. Burma will do with just two infantry. The one thing I hate about defending West Russia with British fighters is a lot of times there's this firepower here and it's kind of just sitting. But 
maybe these troops are going to come back up here and uh, I'll be able to make use of these in the future, but they kind of got to stay here. For now, I kind of have to hold this turret. Alright, let's uh, double and triple check. Alright, that looks good. Strong and strong. May the dice gods be with us. Alright, those worked out. France was uh, particularly favorable for uh, for our side. Uh, this was expected, he only had one infantry there. This fighter will go into India. One of these fighters into India. This fighter in season 8 that I left here replaces that fighter in West Russia. Land the fighter in France back into season 8. Now I want to take these two and put them in Northwest. Reason being, I don't really have too many units. I could have one, two, three, four, five, six units here. Instead I have four here and two here. I think it actually would take him more units to take both than if I had them all stacked together. I think he could actually more efficiently take them stacked together in this situation than them being kind of spread out. If I had a couple more units, I'd probably want them all in France. I, I, I want it to be a pain because I don't really have numbers here. You know, he just has far greater numbers. I'm really just trying to be a buzzing bee here and give him a couple stings here and there while I wait for the, uh, the United States machine to get going. So this sub... I feel like this sub is actually still in a good spot. You can't really freely move transports or single C units around without there being destroyers present. Just forcing him to play a little more tightly. That's really its only purpose. Okay, we're not moving these three fighters. Not moving any of these units. Everything stays in India. We just said that sub is staying there. That looks like everybody will just give it a third look around to make it a double and triple check. Looks good. Okay, fighter in C-Zone 8. Uh, C-Zone 8 is very, very well defended considering he has 1, 2... He only has two that can reach C-Zone 8. I did notice, however, that he left my transport alive. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay, the artillery is gonna come out of England. We'll fill up India with infantry. Let's see what Japan has in store for us. USA round four, let's take a look at Japan. Six infantry, one tank, one artillery, and an industrial complex. Let's see Vlogda and combat. This is combat, took Madagascar, like I said. Also New Zealand, because he's a pain in the butt. Eastern Australia, I guess he took two infantry, only lost one infantry. Uh, he failed in Burma. I lost an infantry. Uh, he lost two infantry, so I've been getting a little lucky on these little land uh, trades. Hopefully that continues. But he was successful here in Kazakh. He lost one infantry, I lost two. So non-combat, we got Sheshwan, Xinjiang, one infantry to Evenki, uh, Yunnan, transport his uh, units from Japan there. Move the, his fleet out to C Zone 40. We have to keep an eye on this. This is why I keep these two here. Um, let's see, one, two, not this round, but next round. He could possibly be coming up here with one, two, three, four, five attackers. So we have to defend this properly. 
He's probably going to take this. Hawaii, bringing him a little closer. I don't, I don't think it's going to get him there, but it's certainly not going to hurt. But we have to watch this. We have to watch this. Mobilization. Put the industrial complex into Quang Tung. So he has two industrial complexes here on the mainland. Okay. So that's it. The rest of the units in Japan. So the United States. Here it is. Let's see, we have three transports here, and we have five here. Okay, so... What do we have here? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen if we get another fighter. So let's do that. Let's make sure we get a fighter this round. As far as transports, we have six, seven, eight transports. Let's get another transport. That gives us nine transports. And then with eight infantry, we have two remaining. Let's uh, upgrade one to an artillery. We'll save one IPC. I always like to save like one or two or three IPC with the United States. It might make it easier to... This, this could be an IPC that could go to like a fighter. I know one IPC isn't much, two or three is better. You know, when doing the math, it can sometimes make it easier to build a fighter or something. All right, so that looks good. So I'm definitely going to take uh, Algeria. I think I'm going to leave the tank right where it is. These three... I think I'm only going to use two of them. We'll send the other transport back for more units. Definitely do this with one of these infantry. This will just go right back. Does the bomber have a purpose? We could go on a rate of this. We can only get up to four here, but that's more than what's average, so that's fine. And I have nothing else to really do with this bomber. I'm not getting this anytime soon, so I don't have to worry about having to repair that myself. Okay, so with the, uh, the transports, two of these fighters, and we'll bring the cruiser and the battleship. The submarine, not doing that against the battleship. Okay, I think that's good for my combat moves. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, so Italy worked out. We did lose the bomber, so a bit of luck goes to him. I think so far in this game, I've been the beneficiary of more luck. But I don't think it's been atrocious luck. Put a destroyer in there. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four out here. What do we got? one that could reach us yeah that's pretty good there one make sure we bring this transport back let's we'll go right back there bring this transport back bring these two units i'll make sure to move this infantry over put the other destroyer in 13 pick up as many of these units as we possibly can drop them all off in morocco these two infantry up in canada since we just brought this transport down. You know what, I did forget something. I wanted to purchase a tank with the United States. That way, I would be able to get a tank here quickly. I'm gonna have a fighter. I'll be able to get a fighter here quickly. I can produce up to 10 units out of here. So I think it's fine. I just wanna see what kind of posture he takes with this. I'm pretty sure he's gonna take Honolulu, and then from there he can threaten uh, this region right here. So we're gonna have to defend San Francisco, possibly. Let's move this sub to 56 we don't want him to get cornered all right double and triple check everything looks good 
Okay, so fighter, transport, artillery, 7 infantry. Alright, let's see what the Soviet Union has in store for us. So that will do it for episode 2 of my match with Mannix. So please join us for episode 3. As always, please like, share, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things that you do. And as always, thanks for watching.